far as how we get here, you start out with $100,000 and uh, convert it back to Atlantic City to 500 <laughs> And instead of making it to the Keys, he, he ran out of gas in Charleston. That's how he got to Charleston. And uh, that's far as to back here, introducing the price, as Rob said. Of course, as far as the my bill is kind of connected to our, our church and community, but um, kind, of, kind of a neat story, I, I guess. Uh, I read that written down. Greg Dixon wrote that down, and I shared that. I guess that was a calculation for a bite, but, um, but um, we're glad God did bring the us. I wanted to read two, uh, three, three scriptures. These were um, ones that Dan liked, and I know in his later days um, here in hospice, he always enjoyed when I read the 23rd Psalm with him, and, um, and he loved John 3.16 and 1 John 3.16. So I'm going to uh, read those and then just uh, say a few words. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In John 3, 16 and 17, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son to whoever believes in him. Should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through Him. 1 John 3.16 By this we know love, that He laid down His life for us, and we ought to lay down our life. Dan was one of our long-time, long-serving ushers at the church, and he uh, was very faithful for, for quite a while, and being on, he'd be on the front porch before church, greeting folks, passing out bulletins, and he would always, um, at, at, and then collecting the, the offering during church. Of course, he, as I understood it, he was a collector for the Irish Mafia back in the day, so it was kind of a joke that he was collecting and, um, and he, he didn't just pass the plate. I mean, he kind of, he kind of shoved it at you. Like, oh, that's on the plate. <laughs> but on the porch, he would always greet, um, good morning, welcome to Rockville Presbyterian Church, we're a family of faith, and Jesus Christ our way of life. Good morning. And people love getting that good morning from Dan the man. Um, and he, it was genuine. And, um, you know, every once in a while he'd break out his, I think it was a three-piece suit. He had a kind of a, he had kind of a, uh, gray suit. He, he, he looked pretty sharp in that thing, too. And he'd be out there greeting, good morning. And good morning is, um, you know, something we say just kind of without thinking about it to people around us, to our family, to our friends, to strangers. But you think about good morning. It's even got some greater depth to it in that when we say good morning, we are saying we are moving from the night, we are moving into a new day, we are moving out of the darkness and into the light. I mean, there's more to it when you think about it. I love that, how damn the three people. Good morning. And if you think about um, the discovery of the resurrected Jesus, or the fact that he was resurrected at, at the tomb on the third day when the women went to the tomb, I think it's no coincidence that it was at the dawn of a new day when they came. Luke says it was very early in the morning, and the, the women came, the tomb was empty, the angel said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, he is risen, and I think in a way the angel was saying, Good morning. Good morning. And it was a good morning. Okay.
because the gloom and the sadness and the fear and the dread could be gone. The darkness was over. The light could shine on that amazing new day. And like those women who went to the tomb on the third day with sadness, uh, we, we too have experienced the sadness, the darkness, the sorrow of, of the death of our brother and friend Dan. And uh, nonetheless, nonetheless, we can say it is yet a good morning. Long, Longfellow, the poet, said, "Tis always morning somewhere. Tis always morning somewhere." I like, I like that. And I think from the, the hope of the Christian's perspective, even if we are in a dark place, we know tis always morning somewhere. And the psalmist had that same hopeful thought when he said, "Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for Thou art with me." Staff, they comfort me. I like that, that I walk through the valley of death. It doesn't say I walk into it and I'm stuck there forever. We may feel that we are in the dark valley, um, needing the presence of the light of the world, needing hope. Um, and of course, we know that faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not yet seen in the darkness. Um, we have the hope that light will come. Um, thinking about Dan, I, I heard an old preacher who said, I don't preach a man's funeral. I don't preach a man's funeral. And, and what he meant by that was he said, a man preaches, a man's life preaches his own funeral. And, and so I'm not going to eulogize Dan here. The words spoken by Rod and Micah were awesome and really really characterized who Dan was, but, but um, Dan's life spoke volumes about who he was and what he believed and that he wasn't who he used to be. And in that sense, we, we all know, I mean, what can you say, but he was a true friend and he was a faithful Christian. He was a forgiven sinner abounding in God's grace and love freely given. Um, and we know with certainty that Dan is with Christ. We mourn. We are sad. Um, but, it, but it's almost because of what we have lost. Um, we, we have the conviction um, that, that Dan is in a better place. Um, that Dan is at the great heavenly party with Jesus. Now. And, um, and we can rejoice in that. And even in our darkness of sorrow, we know that that day is coming. Um, the day when for every, uh, for every believer, uh, we will move out of the darkness into his marvelous light. That day is strangely near. On the night of Jesus of rest, fear, and anxiety, and despair had settled upon the twelve, and Jesus gave them um, some great spiritual advice about peace and um, light in the darkness. He said in John 14, Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. His secret to an untroubled heart is found in faith, not in uh, being stoic, not in rejection, but in faith. Belief in God, believe also in me. And so, in other words, we are to have faith in the love, in the will, and the purpose of God, even in our sorrow. Because God loves us in the night as just as He loves us in the day. His will is not that our loved ones should die, but His will is that even in death that He would be glorified. And His purpose is not only to raise them from the dead out yonder, but to lead us through this valley of the shadow of death even now. And 
and I think that I can, I think I can say with, with a great deal of certainty that we have all walked in that valley. Maybe now. Maybe at some point in our life. Maybe as a result of something we have done. The result of our own sin. Maybe as a victim of someone else's sinful actions. Maybe what part of my story is that I've walked in a, a dark place in the valley uh, because of the darkness of depression. And I think that touches many people. Uh, but, but even in that darkness, even in that valley, um, we, we know that the, the dawn has never failed us yet. Even in the darkness, we know that there is hope to come. I, I, I think it was uh, Victor Hugo who said, Death is no blind alley. Death is no box canyon. It is but a thoroughfare into the, the gale of glory. That even in the darkness, there, there is light and hope to come. And, and there's something about, I don't think we can truly appreciate the light of the salvation, hope, grace, love, and glory we have in Christ until we have been in the darkness. But we don't appreciate um, how good grace is until we can appreciate and understand how bad we have been. And that, and that God's grace and love is greater uh, than anything we have done, any place we have been. Uh, and that when we turn from our sin, turn to Him, that, that He does accept, receive, and know and save us. I want to conclude with this. Um, John Bunyan uh, wrote one of the great Christian classics of Pilgrim's Progress. Many of you probably read that. If you had it, I'll put it on your summer reading list. Um, and, and even with, with our kids, we, we looked at an illustrated version, some great illustrations. It's abridged, shorter than the, the original, but um, a wonderful Christian classic. And in Pilgrim's Progress, the uh, main character is named Christian, and he is on a journey following a path to the celestial city and goes through a lot of hazards on the way. And one of those hazards is the valley of the shadow of death. And when he gets to that place, down in this dark, the illustrations were actually kind of scary in the children's book, um, in that place, the path becomes very narrow and the drop-off is um, precarious. You know, it, it would be a drop-off to your death. And so when Christian gets to this narrow part of the path, it's dark, it's narrow, it's scary, and he, he hesitates because he fears that he will fall off the path. And then a voice comes to him, and the voice says, Attune your ear to my voice. Come to me, come to the sound of my voice, and everything will be all right. Tune your ear to the sound of my voice, and he does, and he is able to follow this treacherous, precarious path through the valley of the shadow of death, and, and come out the other side. And for each of us, for, for Dan, Dan walked the valley of the shadow of death, and has come out the other side, Tuning his ear, attuning his ear, as Bunyan says, to the sound of his voice. Listen to that sound. Come, come to my voice, and you will come through all right. And we do that as we walk. We come through the valley of the shadow of death. We tune our ears to his voice. We come straight to him. We will be all right, as the psalmist says. Guided by his rod, supported by his staff, we will walk out of the darkness and into the sun once more. And emerging from the shadows, the first words we will hear will be his glad good morning. Good. Now, if you are a believer and you are here today, again, what that's about. That great flag is on. Um, it gives us assurance and hope. And if you're not a believer and you're here today, um, then don't miss this opportunity. Uh, don't, no time like the present to turn from your sins and in faith turn to the one who brings us out of the darkness into the marvelous light. Trust in him. Now, in the prophecy of your home today, Turn for your
percent turn to him. Don't miss the opportunity. Let's pray. Father, we do give you thanks for this day, for this time, um, for this gathering of, of the saints. We know, as it's been said, that every every saint has a past, and every sinner has a future as a saint. Um, but Dan, such a, a wonderful example of that to us, and a wonderful example that um, there's no time like now to to share the gospel with another, um, no matter their age, no matter the circumstance, that they might turn from sin and turn to Christ and have that new hope, that new life that brings us into the new dawn with Christ. We thank you that for Dan, there's, uh, as the scriptures tell us, um, that he is with Jesus, that there are no more tears, no more crying, no more pain, no more sickness, um, Lord, and that he is with you. And we do celebrate that. And we do look forward to that, the hope that that gives to us. Uh, Father, as we complete our worship, Lord, um, bring us joy and hope in the words of these songs that were special to Dan, and in the time we have to fellowship and enjoy one another. Um, we know Dan enjoyed so much the, the times of fellowship and food and sharing uh, with the family of faith, and so we just do that in in his memory today and for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Stand with me as we sing our last uh, <laughs> last <laughs>
who indwells you, has something he wants to do through you where you are. Believe that. <laughs> Believe it. And go in the grace, power, glory, and honor of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 